Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. And um, I will call the roll. Um, Rich Roberts will be joining us uh, mid-meeting. Ryan Allard is not here tonight. Uh, Joe Hammer here. Jim Hughes not here. George Oikel here. Tom Dean. Tony Hickey here. Dave Edwards. Michael Vieira. David Drake here. Peter Lombruni here. So that starts us off with one, two, three. <laughs> not a quorum. Do we only have five? Unless Tom comes, right? Well, it, is a, it is a quorum, right? So we could get. And how long is Rich going to be delayed? He said it could be 10 minutes or it could be half. Okay. All right. So we'll start with five of us. Um, I, I also just should mention to everybody uh, some of you may not have been at prior meetings. Um, we have nine regular members and alternates. Our bylaws provide that in order to approve. An application it requires five votes regardless of how many people are voting so if if there are only the five of us at a point where we're taking a vote you would need a unanimous uh, vote but I would uh, address that with the particular applicant at that point um, my name is Joe Hammer I'm filling in for the chairman tonight Tom Dean is is here so we've got six now um, before we get started, there are five public hearing items on the agenda tonight. The way the public hearings will work is we'll hear from the applicant first to present their application. There'll be an opportunity for the commission members to ask questions. Then there'll be an opportunity for the public to either ask questions or make comments. Members of the public, when you speak, we ask that you go up to the podium over there so that what you say can be uh, taken down. And please state your name and address before you speak. And if you have questions for a particular application for the applicant, please direct the questions to the commission. And we will uh, make sure that there's answers from the applicant when they come back up uh, after the public comment. So the first item tonight is uh, item 3.1. Connecticut Association of Boards of Education seeking a zoning text amendment to define office services printing and marketing service less than 20,000 square feet as an allowable use in the zone O office under section 5.2.C.1. Um, if the applicant is here, if you'd like to come up and uh, tell us about your application and what it is that you're proposing. Actually, Attorney Rinelli, if you'd go up to the to the microphone, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Matt Rinelli from the law firm of Shipman and Goodwin, um, and I'm here uh, tonight on behalf of the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education uh, with our application to request a zone text amendment. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to present our application. Uh, to you this evening. Uh, before I get started, I do have um, one uh, letter of support I'd like to provide to you from um, the other uh, uh, tenant and owner of 81 Wilcott, Wilcott Hill Road. So I'll pass those up to you. Thank you. Although our application is not limited to uh, uh, the address 81 Wolcott Hill Road, it's really a zone text amendment that would affect uh, the O zone as a whole. Uh, I should pause O zone as a whole. <laughs> um, there are uh, cable owns uh, two of the units at 81 Wolcott Hill Road, and the letter I handed up is from the third owner and expressing their support uh, for um, 
this uh, zone text amendment as well as our our plans which really aren't the subject of the hearing but will obviously help understand why we're asking for this change so the, the reason uh, we're requesting the change is uh, CABE was looking to um, rent uh, a portion of its of its um, building to Minuteman Press Minuteman Press provides um, printing services and marketing services to offices and businesses for jobs that tend not to be handled in-house um, but are sort of uh, things that a that a the company might need um, and in talking with town staff it was not entirely clear in the existing regulations whether this fell under an office use or not um, so to um, a, a clarify that um, use uh, is an allowable use we, what we've proposed is an amendment uh, to section 2.3 of the regulations which is the definition section to add a, um, a definition um, and that's in our materials at exhibit a the definition of uh, office services a printing and marketing service less than or equal to 20,000 square feet that within your existing ozone there's a distinction between uh, how you permit um, office uses below 20,000 square feet and above 20,000 square feet so we picked up on that and just made this consistent with how you permit those uses in general uh, so we uh, propose to define that use as a business establishment not to exceed 20,000 square feet and providing printing and marketing material services to support primarily offices, institutions, businesses, clubs, nonprofit organizations. And then uh, it, it goes on to say office services is a business office use to make it clear that it falls within the allowable uses in the ozone. Um, and uh, that would, that would, I think, allow this service, which we think is an appropriate use um, within the zone. It's, it is not disruptive. It's not like printing presses of old where they have massive equipment and they're manually setting typesetters and things like that. It is more of a modern operation that you would find, for example, in my office in downtown Hartford. They have, you know, third-party services that, you know, firms use to when it exceeds the capacity of their in-house abilities um, so we are available to answer any questions you may have I know uh, in the record there's comments from the uh, capital region Council of Governments as well as a staff report I'm happy to cover those unless staff is going to cover them yes. okay um, all right then I'm going to open it up on this yes. end for questions yes. and we'll let you know if we have some here but Denise did you want to give some background first um, <clears throat> so as noted um, we got an inquiry um, regarding uh, Minuteman press and their desire to locate to 81 arrow uh, look at Hill Road um, we did suggest uh, this text amendment. So my memo of April 28th just uh, goes into the description of the purpose of the um, office zone um, as reflected in the zoning regulations. Um, I also describe that the um, area within town that is zoned office is limited um, and the properties include 30 Jordan Lane, uh, 200 Follybrook Boulevard, 176 Cumberland, uh, 81 to 113 Wilcott Hill Road, uh, 365 to 449 Silas Dean Highway. Um, I have included in the record a copy of the um, uh, GIS map that I did showing the office zone locations. Um, unfortunately, some of the colors on the maps are similar to each other so it's a little bit hard to distinguish this um, pinkish color um, but um, essentially there are uh, three small pockets of ozone um, and I don't have any um, I, I don't find any conflict with the regulations or the 2013 plan of conservation and development um, we also got a letter from the Regional Planning Commission indicating that the referral found no 
uh, apparent conflict with the regional plans or policies. Um, and the only other thing that I note is as part of a zoning text amendment, uh, the regulations uh, note that the commission shall, shall determine um, that the regulation change uh, not impact public health, safety, welfare, property values adversely, um, and that the proposed change does not um, hinder the purpose of the regulation. Okay. Commission members, any questions? Tom? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, Thomas, Commissioner Thomas Dean speaking. Um, I have a, a couple of questions for the applicant and uh, one for staff. Uh, first off, uh, the amount of square footage that uh, CABE currently occupies in the building, can you uh, indicate that? Uh, well, I, I was remiss in the beginning. I didn't introduce, I have with me Patrice McCarthy, who is the Executive Director and General Counsel of CABE. And I'm going to, I don't know the square footage of each occupancy. I'm going to see if she or perhaps our uh, broker, uh, Bob Botts, knows the square footage. Pro approximately 3,500 square feet for each unit, for both. 3,500 is what Cade is in. Yeah. And uh, MedVan Press would be looking to occupy approximately 2,359 square feet. Okay. So um, 3,500 is both units, and they're looking to occupy about 2,300 and change of those square feet, and Cade would retain the rest. Okay. So... Uh, the total amount of occupancy for CABE remains the uh, remains the same, except that you are subletting roughly 2,300 or so square feet of the 33,000 plus square feet space that you currently occupy. Actually, it was previously occupied by a tenant, um, which the accounting firm dissolved, and therefore they are no longer in the space. Okay, so this this then. The, K, the space that CABE is actually occupying and will continue to occupy doesn't really change. But as I understand it, CABE is going to be the, the primary tenant for this new space that you're going to sublet to the, the uh, printing press company? Well, we all could I, yeah, sorry, could I just, ma'am, could I ask you to come up to the microphone so it's on the yeah. transcript? And just for a point of reference, the, this application is for the text amendment, not for the location approval. I understand. Um, I'm just trying to get to the context location. established. Okay. You could also identify yourself for the record. I, I'm Patrice McCarthy, the Executive Director and General Counsel for the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. My association owns Units 1 and 2 at 81 Wolcott Hill Road. And during the time of our ownership, we have leased the front portion, essentially unit one, um, to a longtime tenant, which is now no longer occupying the space. Therefore, we are seeking a, a new tenant that would require this uh, text amendment. I see. So the, the space isn't necessarily being uh, lent to Minutemen Press as, as an adjunct to the functions of CABE, whether yeah. it, it's essentially uh, you own the space, you're, you're uh, letting that space, leasing that space to Minuteman Press uh, so that the, the total amount of, of space that, that's involved with both CAVE and the proposed Minuteman, space, uh, Minuteman Press uh, occupancy now within total, a grand total of a bit over 5,000 square feet, is that uh, correct? No. Yes, the, t the total space that CABE owns is about 5,000 square feet, correct? Okay. Okay. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and now for, um, for Denise, if I can ask, pose a question to you. With, the, uh, with this proposed uh, text amendment, uh, it, it, it arises from a perceived lack of clarity in the current regulations that the functions of Minuteman Press would uh, conform to the requirements for uh, the, the office space requirements. That's right. Um, before coming to uh, the conclusion of, of, uh, of a zoning text amendment, have, did, uh, uh, did 
the planning office uh, contact uh, local council for the for the town to seek an interpretation of uh, the current uh, uh, regulations to see if the, it would be a reasonable interpretation uh, for the operations of Minuteman Press uh, as as being office under current regulations or not. Our zoning enforcement officer made an interpretation that it would not comply with the current regulations as they stand. Um, and and as I see it, it, it kind of results from the nature of the occupancy. That is that Minuteman Press is not, an, you know, its functions in the building are not an adjunct to the functions of CABE, but rather is a, it's a separate operational business. That's right. Okay. Um, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else with a question? Dave? Uh, this might not be the right time. Maybe after we make a motion, but I, I do have concerns about the 20,000 square foot. I think what you guys are doing are fine, but yeah. opening a door up for a 20,000 square foot printing operation may be not what we want. But do we do, do I talk about that after we make a motion? Well, I, I think we can. I mean, I think we can talk about it now as well. Okay. Are you thinking it should be a lower threshold? Well, a twenty thousand square foot building is a big building. If you put a big printing operation, that's a big. That's a big. What you guys do, I have no problem with. I just think we should discuss that a little well, bit. If we want to limit printing to something, right? I, I and I think that's a good point, Dave, because I, I, I was also. You're right. I mean, if it's if it's a nineteen thousand square foot printing operation, there could be a lot of truck. Traffic, big, big operation. Kinds not of not things, the wrong right? with it, but it may not just be an office right. space. And I, and I have nothing. Pro what you're doing, I think, is fine. And it's, I guess they were they were saying that their total three units together is around five thousand yeah. square feet, right? So, yeah. um, so maybe we want to change that to five thousand. I don't know. Could, yeah. but Mr. That, Chairman, we, yes. we we as I said, we selected the twenty thousand just because it's a demarcation in there. We would have no objection to reducing that number down to five thousand or. If that's the appropriate number, that would okay. be adequate for us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and again, Denise, just so I understand, it seems that the the issue was really the office zone uses are supposed to be office in nature. This is more of a supportive use for offices wherever they may be, but it's sort of a hybrid. It's almost a manufacturing in part. Is that the issue? Yeah, I think um, I don't have a copy of the zoning enforcement officers um, interpretation right here but he essentially had considered it being a type of industrial use right. Right. Um, processing and but, some of that kind. but the issue was that in the location Minuteman is in now they were approved as retail so it was kind of okay where are they now they are at uh, 462 Silas Dean Highway. And what zone is that? The town center. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other commission members at this point, Peter? Um, I, I just want to go back to this point. I, I understand it, but I'm just curious. So you're requesting this amendment strictly for the purposes of, of allowing this Miniman to be uh, in operation? It's just you want a tenant and this particular tenant can't fit in the existing uh, location? Or do you have some intention at some future point uh, of, of having an adjunct kind of operation with them? I'm, I'm just trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, no, um, it, it really arose in the, in the process of getting a tenant like any owner, you know, tenant relationship and in conversing with the town about this tenant and confirming before signing a lease that it was an appropriate use. So it sort of evolved organically. We got into this discussion of whether this was something that was sort of office use because it supports and fosters office, which is the point of that zone. Um, and we felt it did. And you know, as uh, the planner indicated, there was a difference of opinion and we thought this was the correct way to resolve it. So our plans are not to do anything further, but we thought this was an appropriate route because there are a limited number of office uh, properties in the zone. The point of the zone is to make sure office is sort of a viable thing, and this is a service a lot of offices need. Okay, I just have a follow-up question for you, Denise, based on this. So uh, their need is roughly 5,000, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. 
They chose 20 because that's a demarcation line in the, in the current regulations. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be serious about making this tax amendment, which is going to affect, what, four or five different areas here in town, I guess, uh, by these colors, uh, what would your recommendation be? I mean, 5,000 meets their needs. 20,000, I agree with Dave, is, is, is quite a bit more. So what, what do you think is a more appropriate uh, square footage as a universal tax change for the five or so locations in town? Do you have an opinion on that? I mean, I think in terms of scale, I would probably start with five. Okay. And if we encounter another request in the future, that takes us, you know, to look back at it. Um, so what I'm hearing from you is you'd rather start small yeah. and uh, see how it goes and, and if necessary, you can always increase it. Yes. Right. I got it. Thank you. Just, just keep my 5,000 is not small. <laughs> well, uh -huh. I'm just saying. this room, it's not that big. I mean, well, you think this room is 5,000? No, double mean, this room. Yeah. Say. Well, that's big. <laughs> and again, I don't have a problem with you guys doing it, but I'm just saying 5,000 square foot is, you know. I, I agree that 20 is, is big. That's Did you say you wanted five? You wanted 2,300 for the printing, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. So when we started at 2,500. And unit one would be 2,300. And, yeah. and to respond to a prior comment, yeah. we've my association has existed for 117 years and we have a very specific mission and it would never include running a printing operation in our entire right. space we agree with you know we understand that we'll just think about the next guy that's that's right. that's right. Right. dave i think you make a good point to me 2500 is a Seems much okay. smaller scale and, and if you're, if you're someone come back and if you're going to do that then i guess the question is up to 2500 is it site plan only and if it's over 2500 is it just not allowed or is it allowed by special permit because we'd have to we'd have to decide that yeah. um, as we get later in yeah, the proceeding any any other commission members have questions tony i think it's great to fill any vacant space especially if it's been vacant for a while i like the discussion that we've carried through on this uh, i'm looking forward to the application coming in because this is just the text amendment concerned about the other five places all oh, bring it in printing companies and uh, you might have five of them all file at the same time with vacancies at there. Maybe we won't. But uh, Miniman Press, as they move in here, will be open to the public? Yes. It won't just be used by CAVE. It'll be open. Yeah, and, and other offices, not just. And know. there's enough parking that would satisfy the lighting, yes. the hours of operation or something. Again, these are for future questions for future applications. But uh, Absolutely. Um, th their clients make appointments with them, uh, th certainly at their current location, they keep their door locked. Um, our part, th there, there will be less client traffic than the uh, accounting firm that previously occupied the space uh, required, and their uh, materials are brought in and brought out in a Ford Explorer, not a tractor trailer. It'll be reasonable, open and close hours. Uh number of employees parking will be discussed in future yeah, future yeah that would be part sure. of the site plan application yep. exactly thank you I, I just want to confirm 2500 is sufficient for you because you said 5000 before but really what you need is 2500 right correct that would be okay all right all right i'm going to open it up to the public at this point is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this application yes sir if you could come up and uh, give your name and address Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jeff Foley. I own Minuteman Press at 462 Silas Dean Highway. And uh, I don't see any issues why we couldn't move in there. As I've been told, uh, we use an explorer for delivery to our customers. Um, our customers uh, make appointments with us. Um, we do not run an ink press on our site. Um, we, we actually use digital presses, which most people have in their offices today. Uh, ours are just a little more high tech um, to generate a little more volume to help the attorneys and things like that, firms. Um, and uh, we solicit our own, well, the only thing we solicit is our businesses, local businesses, nonprofits, things like that. Um, so um, we're hopeful that uh, the council will decide in our favor and um, we can join with Patrice. Peter. Are, are you staying at the other? The, the current locations, or are you moving? Them? We are moving. So you will vacate where you are we now? We will be vacating that spot. 
space. You're not running two operations? No, sir. Okay. How, how large is the existing spot? Our existing is a little large for us, actually. We're in 3,500 square feet. And, and just kind of for, for this type of use, typically, what are the hours of operation? We're doing 9 to 5. Five days a week? Monday through Thursday, 9 to, one, nine to 3 on Fridays. Okay. And Saturday, Sunday, we're closed. Okay. Holidays, we're closed. Okay. Sounds right. like we can approve two applications today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate Any, it. Anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak on this? Anyone else in the audience? Last call, anybody in the audience who'd like to speak on this? All right, seeing none, um, does the applicant have any, any, first of all, any commission members have any further questions? And if not, would you, do you have anything further? Yeah, no, thank you again for, uh, to uh, Planner Bradley for assistance in preparing this and for the members for the opportunity to answer your questions. Um, I think it's, it is in our application. We think it would be a great um, benefit to us and obviously to Minimum Press. Um, and I guess, Mr. Chairman, my only question before we close is sort of, sort of a little uh, voting calculus here. Are, do we have now six voting members or five? Six. Okay. Right. So, yeah, okay. So if you're in uh, a frame to act tonight, we would ask that you act this evening. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, okay, do we have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Tony, second. second by George. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we can um, start deliberation, or if somebody would like to make a motion to get us towards a deliberation. Tom, Mr. Friday. Chairman, I think I have a motion to make on this. I would uh, prove to, uh, uh, I would move to approve uh, application number 2141-23-Z, Connecticut Association Boards of Education, um, subject to the following uh, conditions and findings. Uh, first off, that, uh, the, uh, that the application is found to, uh, is found in accord with the following determination, that the Public health, safety, welfare, and no property values will not be adversely affected. The proposed change will not hinder the attainment of the purposes of the regulations. Um, and I think that's it in terms of the determinations that uh, we must make. Uh, I would move that the uh, that the approval of this of the uh, change in the regulation uh, language um, be modified uh, in accord with the following language. Uh, as proposed by the applicant, um, but with the following addition after the uh, phrase uh, business use office, business office use, uh, eliminate the period, add a comma, and add the following word with such printing and marketing material services not to exceed 2,500 square feet at any applicable location in the zone, so that the entire regulatory change would read, a business establishment not to exceed 20,000 square feet and providing printing and marketing material services to, pr to support primarily offices, institutions, businesses, clubs, nonprofit organizations, period. Office services is a business office use with such printing and marketing material services not to exceed 2,500 square feet at any applicable location in the zone, period, end quote. So, Tom, can I um, just make a suggestion even before we go to a, or should we go to a second for it? It doesn't really matter. Um, to, I'm thinking, couldn't we just work with the definition they have and simply where it says printing and marketing services less than 20,000 square feet, just say, you know, less than or equal to 2,500 square feet. And if you do there and then in the, in the next clause, a business establishment not to exceed 2,500 square feet, does that work, Denise? So I'm just going to suggest that might be 
That's a simpler simply way language. to do it. Yeah. With that, it within that, that doesn't work, does it? Because O was supposed to be at 20,000 square feet. So you just eliminated, We're eliminated 20, the 20. Well, I just changed the two 20,000s to 2,500. No, no, but you, you limited O totally. O has to be 20,000 square feet. Just the printing part in O can only have to be. Well, I think that's what I, I was getting we're, at. We're only, but it, I think in, it can be whatever yeah. we make it, whether it's 5,000, 2,500, or 20,000. It's going to be a whole new use category. Is that correct? But, no. Yes, no. it would be. Right. I, Joe, I think you got it wrong. O, o, o is 20,000 square feet. So any, any office guy can get 20,000 square feet. Inside O, we want to limit printing to 2,500 square well, feet into you, 20. I you can Denise reword it if you want. I making it a new category, okay. not office, but why don't you yeah. explain what you had in mind? So or are you just saying it's within the office? So maybe that is what you're saying. So it would be uh, located... So it would become um, five to C six. A new six. Right. It would be six. Standalone, so it's separate from the regular business, professional or medical office use categories that are both above and below twenty and vary by zone. This would That's be a right. new six. Yeah. And the the threshold for the twenty thousand is just really. Uh, it, a mechanism for if it's uh, under twenty thousand, it's a site plan. If it's over well, twenty thousand, it's we, a special permit. But I, I know you're talking talk about twenty five hundred. But that that's where the twenty thousand. Yeah, I, I agree. This is confusing, Dave, because it seems like Exhibit okay, A is continue. intending to put it in yeah. the existing. She, she can clean it up. Yeah. Okay. Tom got it but right. I think this, <laughs> but I think the second part of it that we should consider is whether. It's being allowed over 2,500 at all at this point, or if we're just limiting it to up to 2,500 by site plan in the future. If we think it ever needs to get higher, we can deal with it then. And that would be my inclination not to not to get into allowing it by special permit for a higher square footage at this point, because I think I, that's just I, I encouraging agree. it. Let's just keep it simple for for, for now. So, is that acceptable yeah. to you, Tom? The, the gist. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I, I uh, completely comprehend what, what you're just making, but uh, as, as I understand it, it seems to conform to my intent. Um, um, Tom, he's, he's, he's asking if you're in agreement that we not uh, do a special permit allowance for beyond 2,500. That's what he asked. Correct. That that's just that's right. That's, that's, that, that's, okay. that's my yeah. intent as well. But why, why can't we use Tom's words? I mean, that's pretty straightforward. I, I kind of like the way Tom uh, phrase, uh, phrased it. Seems to, to, to clearly identify the 2,500 to the specific area of printing. I don't know, Denise. Maybe you can clean it up different. I think, but I think his to, words were pretty good. I, I well, it, it could it could go really either way. What I was looking at is basically modifying uh, the language in uh, Regulation C1 uh, and insert the intent for this. What you're what you're proposing is to add a completely new. Uh, re regulation onto uh, C numbers C one through five, and this would be C six. I, I would uh, that that's fine with me, except that I would, for purposes of, of uh, clarity with regards to this, I would recommend that instead of the number being uh, C six, that it would be C one A. So that is a, it's basically a subordinate subsection of C1. Okay. And just for clarification, Exhibit A is specific to Section 2.3 within our definitions. So I would also add this office services um, right under um, the existing uh, office, business, professional, medical definition that we have. Um, but I think it also needs to be in the table. In the table, so that's right. So in the definition, so in the definition, yeah. the two twenty thousand square foot references become twenty five hundred, right. and then in the table, you may also need to put the twenty five hundred. Yep. So it's clear. Okay. So I, I, it's your preference if you'd rather have right. it be one A or. One well, this six. by having it as one A, it's mm -hmm. it's basically it becomes a subsection, so it preserves 
the essential language in C1 and keeps the 20,000 square foot of gross floor, uh, gross floor area for business, offices, business office uses. Okay. And then by making it 1C, you're carving out a sort of a, a, a separate section for the exclusive use of you know, business printing services within the scope of that particular use. So I think that so the new use category is just going to be titled office services, printing and marketing services less than 2,500. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. So and and 2,500 square feet for that purpose, I, I concur that that should, you know, that should be the current limit and we can. Then it will be by site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Second. By George. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please say Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And, uh, you know what? We need to set uh, an effective date as part of our motion. So let's. Why don't we do that and then just vote again to make clear and give yourself give yourself time so it uh, can be published prior to the effective date uh, without uh, having a problem with that. So it'll be published on the 11th, um, and then. It can go into effect May 26th. That's yep. that, that's fine. I think it's at uh, okay. Okay. All right. So why don't we just to, just to be clear? Um, so basically, we've added uh, an effective date of May. 26th mm -hmm. essentially to the okay. to the motion is that I acceptable concur. Tom and George I agree yes. and why don't we just vote again to be clear uh, all in favor of the motion with the effective date please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions motion is approved thank you very much all right next up is uh, application 2142-23 Jose uh, Alexandre seeking a special permit for a shed over 200 square feet if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself and uh, the application. Uh, good evening. My name is Jose Alexandri. I live at 15 Prospect Street. I've been there for about two decades now, about 17 to 20 years. And I'm hoping to put in a little larger shed than what you'd normally expect. <coughs> I have uh, some landscaping equipment that I have had from my mother's house, from mine. My mother passed away. I had to bring all her equipment here to my property and I'm kind of overloaded with equipment right now. Plus, we're putting in a deck in a pool in the backyard and we're gonna have stuff for that to also store in the winter time and summer and winter will obviously be changing it. It's strictly gonna be for storage and my rough estimate is like 288 square feet opposed to 200 square feet. George? George? Yeah. Um, I went over to see the site as I see most sites, right? Yes, Tony. Yeah, we're confident you did. Yes, and uh, yeah, it's fine. What's what's there? And it's shrouded on the back side and on the right side. He's a, I consider him a good property owner right at the moment. He looks like he's going to be doing a lot. He's talked to me about uh, the additional work he wants to do on site. Absolutely, and. Uh, well, right now, he's, this is okay where it is, and it's located with, uh, and shrouded, I think, enough to, uh, from the adjoining properties. I'll stop Joe, there. Peter? Yeah, you said you think it's, or you believe it's about 288. Is, isn't this a prefab building that you get? It is. It is. Yeah, uh, the reason why I'm... I'm buying a prefab because it's a reputable company opposed to the last time I bought a shed, which I actually have some roof rot going on because it wasn't assembled correctly. And I'm hoping with the barnyard that they'll do it properly and I'll have a building that should last for many decades, hopefully. So, so it's a prefab manufactured 12 by 24 Correct. building, right? Correct. Okay. George? Yeah, one more. I, are you going to be putting, and I forget, being named though that I was there yesterday. Um, but on that far right side of that property owner, are you, are you, and you with the fence, and it's twines growing up, are you going to be doing something to shroud that a little bit more? 
Uh, if, if the gentleman would like it, the owner of that property would like me to put up a fence or to put up some shrubbery of one kind, it is no problem. I could do that. What was there before was overgrown shrubbery, which my mom owned the property, was not released to me until this year, right. and she wouldn't let me do anything with it. I wanted to put a fence, and she said, no, it's my property. I'll do what I want. And, you know. Well, it's, it's good toward the back yeah. and the elderly housing and so forth, but... Uh, that right <coughs> side, right rear corner, maybe you could put up something and maybe we should Absolutely. encourage that. What do you want to do? do? Whatever, whatever him and I what would, would like, you want to do? I that? would like to put a fence there, but I don't think the fence would be high enough considering the pool is going to be pretty high and the deck is going to be pretty high. Well, uh, yeah. I would rather put our varieties that grow maybe 10, 15 feet, which would literally block out that whole well, area and give him more privacy. Me. And it would look more uh, pleasing to the eye as well. And the shed that I'm also purchasing, the prefab, is, uh, is going to match the siding that I'm putting on the house. I'm putting all new siding on the house. I'm putting on a nice deck. I'm putting a nice pool in the backyard. It's going to be a gray color. And the shed that I've purchased is also going to be a gray color in the same style of the house. The house is a cape. Uh, hold I'm, on. I'm sorry. We don't need to know what you're going to do. Okay, with the I house. just we want to let you know, the, give you the back look. corner where you're putting this, and and the adjoining neighbors, right. and uh, keeping it so that that's uh, not obtrusive to them. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Tony. Denise, does this satisfy the sidelines and setbacks as required? It does. It maintains a five foot setback, which is required. Um, and just to note. Um, he is removing an existing 8 by 12 shed um, to replace um, with this 12 by 24. And is there any negative uh, feedback by any of the that's neighbors? Right. Uh, the that's got the roof I've not out, gotten right? anything. The one that has the rotting roof on it, yes. That one's gone. Hopefully he's going to take it. If not, I'm going to bust it up and take it to the transfer station in pieces and dispose of it properly. Will you be putting electricity into this shed? I would like to, but it's not necessary. So there won't be any outside lighting to distract from the neighbors? I'm going to need to put some lighting out to the pool for the pump. For the pool? Yeah, the, which is a, we're, we're attached, which is shed. going to be right next to the deck. So I would like to have some lighting out there, but it's not necessary. Okay. I don't have to. Okay. It doesn't matter. And what kind of thing, what would you use the shed for? What kind of things? For storing my all my lawn equipment, snow blowers in the winter, in the summer, and uh, in the winter, all my lawn equipment. And you'll just access it over grass area? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any other uh, commission members? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak on this application? Anyone in the public who'd like to speak on this application? Last call. Anyone in the public who'd like to speak on this application? Okay. See, seeing none, any further? Denise, did you have um, something? Just that I've gotten no additional uh, staff comments. So. There were no suggested changes. Okay. Commission members, any further questions? No. If not, would some, do you have anything further you'd like to mm, say? Before no, we? unless you have any other questions. Do we want to? Do we want to put a requirement toward the right rear side of this back? Any abravite? He said abravite. You want might want to put up. Do we yeah, want I'd to like to plant some abravite. He said, thank you. Would look. Pleasing Cer to certainly could George. If uh, I'm willing to, is that something was we require or something like that? I mean, it'd be nice if he wants to. Is that something um, would we require? We require it in these yeah, kind of that's conditions. That's in our zoning yeah. boards. They require zoning rules. They require that on the shed. I think it would, screen, I think it would be a screening, you know, from the abutting screening. property if we feel it's appropriate. Okay. Could we it's not just that. advocate it versus yeah. mandating it? Yeah. No, 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 none of that. Just if we want to. The, the other properties are either level or slightly downhill from it, so, you know, you might want to protect them a little bit. I mean, just, just to be clear, I think you indicated that you you have no objection to, no, to not adding at some arbor variety, correct? Yes. I'd put them in the ground, plant them, take care of them, and grow them hopefully up to 15 feet. So you, you would just do it along that side of the, Correct. Of the shed, basically. My, my opinion is this This is really no no bigger than the shed that's there. It's, it's a huge, long uh, property he's got there. Uh, I understand that you want to put up providers because you want privacy with your pool. Right? Well, that so is well. Like I said, and the neighbor also has a dog on the adjacent property, the one that's along the fence line. Right. So 
Would you be adverse to us requiring this as opposed to just it's a nice thing to do? Whatever you'd like to do is fine okay. with me. All I right. mean, if you want to require it, that's fine. I will do that. All right. Okay. Anybody else have anything further for the applicant before we close? If, if motion, not, motion to close. Motion by Tony. Second. Second. By, sorry. Oh, second. Okay. Second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Would someone now like to make a motion on the application? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, application 2142-23-Z, uh, Jose Ale Alexander seeking a special permit uh, in accordance with 36C, accessory building and structures, uh, with zoning for a shed of two, over 200 square feet uh, to be limited to a shed of the size of uh, 12 by uh, 24, which Correct. is a total of 288 square feet. Correct. So, I mean, that we, we're going by your, your request here. Right. We're no bigger than that. Okay. Uh, also, uh, to add um, a row of Abravide trees, uh, what side of the property is that? That'd be the, well, the, facing the backyard, it's the right-hand side. Or if you're in the back looking forward, it would be the left-hand side. How, how far right. along that you, side? You really sir. shouldn't be asking okay, the applicant so any more uh, questions at this point. Well, I just how, want to know where to look yeah, at Yeah, I know the hearing is closed, yeah. though, so... I would do that whole fence area. I'm, I'm sorry, I you I'm can't sorry. ask the question. I think Denise uh, could probably answer that for you. What's, what side? What side is the uh, Abravides? East, west, north? You know. It's uh, that'd be the east, east side. East. Of the, east. Yeah, yeah. east side. With, with the row of Abravides uh, screening the uh, east side of the property line. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. There's second. Second by George. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Next is uh, application 2143-23, Max Bebo's Mediterranean, seeking special permit uh, in accordance with section 5.8 alcoholic beverages and 5.2.f.2 hospitality uses. Mm -hmm for the sale of alcohol and outdoor dining at 691 Silas Dean Highway. If you'd like to introduce yourself, a name and address for the record. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Caprillis, and I live at 637 Knott Street in Wethersville. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aldi Pekini, and I live in 134 Hampton Court, Newington. Okay, thank you. Please tell us uh, about your application. Yes, definitely. We are seeking to get an outdoor uh, seating patio and also getting liquor license. Uh, we recently became the owners of Max Bebos. Uh, it's been in Wethersfield for 21 years and we want to take the business to the next level and operate a little bit later on hours um, and also extend Sundays. Uh, the liquor permit will help us to do brunches um, for the weekends and then at night time to capture more local customers to have a drink with something to eat. Okay, and George. Yeah. Uh, I toured the site. I even saw your, uh, as an applicant, you're very willing to put a table and two chairs out front, which uh, was very nice because it showed that the sidewalk had, I think I measured it by walking it, uh, three, what, four feet maybe? Three and a half to four feet between the table and the outer edge of the sidewalk. Uh, so that's the front. The side has been eliminated by, what is it, the fire marshal, Denise? The fire marshal did have a comment regarding the location. Yeah, and more than a comment. He yeah. said no, there's <laughs> some concern. So uh, that side bothers me, the south the uh, south side. But the front looks looks good to me. So. Anyway, you uh, you showed that you could could do things out there with uh, uh, tables and two chairs. Okay. Correct. That will be on the front of the side. Uh, now on the side of the building. Um, yeah. When uh, I talked to the staff, it was we'll have to build um, a patio fence for um, any cars that are coming through because it's a one way uh, going just for the safety of our patrons customers. I think you, my opinion, 
is yeah, but that gets that makes that very narrow, and uh, I would be concerned that we deal with the front only tonight. But uh, that's my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the commission feels, but uh, that side uh, with the comment by the what fire marshal Denise? Was yes. It? Okay. Uh, kind of put the squash on that, and uh, but maybe it can, you can uh, correct that with the uh, the appropriate safety issues there, but it would narrow it up quite a bit. So I think we'd want to look at that maybe separately at a future time. The fire marshal did not really define what type of crash barrier protection he'd be looking for, but that's yeah. definitely within his yeah. I don't even purview, know if it worked right? there. And, yeah, and, I, and he, did, he didn't comment on whether if you do it, it you know, would we be narrowing the, the driveway too much. I, I, just, I just have a little concern that this is basically a hand sketch, and we really need uh, a site plan with, with measurements. Uh, I mean, I understand what you're trying to do. I have no particular objection to what you're trying to do, but, but uh, you know, normally for something like this, you, you would hire someone to actually go out there and measure, do it to scale, and, uh, you know, I don't know how much space you're going to have on that side. Maybe you can put jersey barriers there. And, and still have enough for a car, but but you can't determine that with a hand sketch. You have to have someone do that for you. Correct. Um, and you know, obviously, the safety is the number one, right? Uh, so we're thinking to put small tables again on that side of the wall, against the wall. So it will only be like two seating or three seating with a it, fence yeah, in the back. That, that, but, that doesn't define safety. You know, be, being close to the wall doesn't define safety because we don't have how wide the lane is, we don't know what the turn radiuses are. That has to be done by an engineer that determines that the car can safely negotiate around that curve without uh, the obstruction of a table and people there. Uh, I mean, your word is not enough, frankly. I mean, if yeah. you want to do something like that, I think, I think you really have to get something uh, on paper. My colleague is right on that one. So I just wanted to... Um kind of give a point of reference. Um, when uh, the applicant came into the office about a month ago, um, he was seeking to uh, just get a special permit for alcoholic beverages. Um, I advised that they also at the same time apply for outdoor dining um, because it has been um, a location that has been considered um, in the past to make a big impact on that the corner. Um, so there is concern about circulation. Um, from my memo uh, dated April 28th, um, you know the, the potential for outdoor dining at the location is there. Um, it can be done with certain crash protections on the side. Um, there is also potential for outdoor dining um, at the second entrance in the rear. Um, so I think, um, as noted in the memo, if uh, you were going to look favorably generally at for outdoor dining, I would have them come back with an updated survey showing the improvements when they actually want to do the installation. Um, showing a revised parking calculation um, and you know construction details. So what would be what would we be approving if we don't know what they have in mind in detail? I mean, I think to George's point, the outdoor dining in the front on the sidewalk is something that probably could be done. I think that'll right work. Um, yeah, without physically without any, any special to do, right? Just yeah. I would be willing to approve the front, but the, if they want to come back on the side or out back, they got to come back with a lot more details as our town plan yeah. suggested. Yeah. I support that. I, so I, I think it would be just, you know, I suggested that they come with one application because it's one fee. They notified all the neighbors, they posted the sign, and just to kind of have the discussion um, about generally whether or not we were in support. Tony? 
We had the same de debate with uh, the vetoes at one time yeah. where they wanted to put a handful of tables outside. We approved it, subject to the oversight of the town planner's office and, more importantly, the engineering department. I believe the engineering has not had a formal site plan or anything submitted to them. So if it was approved, again, subject to the same process. We've got a great engineering office. We've got great support staff. But that, that would be really important. And, and uh, I mean, if, if we just recognized your liquor approval for tonight and tabled, uh, put aside any outside dining, would that be satisfactory to you for this evening? Or, uh, you, or would you like us to consider uh, recognizing the outside dining subject to site plans and complete detailed approval by the engineering office? Is that something reasonable? It's definitely something reasonable. Um, as you guys mentioned, if we can just do something, you know, the season begins to spring, summertime is coming, if we can just be able to do the four tables in the front for now, and then we'll definitely I'd come up. The that would again be subject to the engineering department. Like, um, I guess my recollection well, well, on, on vetoes, I'm trying to remember, but um, were there planters that, that had to be put out there? How did that sidewalk width compare to the width in front of this? space was it was it wider I, I don't you know i don't know the answers to that it's, it's wide yeah, you, I, I saw a table out there with two chairs and there's three and a half to four feet in front of it to the curb so that that's plenty of room to walk so was it so crash that, crash protection was part of the approval the vetoes yeah. did that consist just of the stop bars stop and bar. the parking yeah. spaces for the front yeah. was that for the front of the yes. building the but uh, but out front you got to remember there are uh spaces along north of it and there's curbing right there right. and on both front and side of it so, so can we approve the east side though with engineering approval of some subject, subject, subject to some to approval to get you guys going and, and, and again like everybody said I think the south side you need a little bit of work here okay yeah my, probably my concern is if we approve it with someone else who knows what they're doing, looking at this thing, if somebody gets killed, then right. so, it's right. So, so I think what you're saying, even yes. even as to the front, I think what we're all saying is still subject to fire marshal and engineer. Right, right, but we can prove the front and you know whatever else is just the south. I think you have to come by and do some work as you're going. Did the yeah. fire marshal look at the front? It did. Yeah, it, it seems like the concern, I mean, he wanted crash protection for the front, um, but that, you know, the issue um, that could be dealt with was, his concern about the the driveway with yeah. tables and chairs being placed on the on the side south drive so can i just just back to the so max bebo's did not have a, a liquor license correct correct and and your it looks like your hours are your hours of operation similar to what the old max bebo's was in terms of not you're really not open in the evenings at all Correct. For now, we just got in two weeks ago, yeah. and our plan is to extend the hours for evening and also open Sundays. Um, in, in the evening, we might go through 9 to 10 o'clock. Sorry, I'm, let me back up a step. You might go how late in the evening? 9 to 10 o'clock. What, what nights would that be? Uh, it would be basically every night. And, and are you plan did you say you are planning to open Sundays? Right? Sundays, yes. What would those hours be? So for right now, we're just thinking to open for brunch, but eventually we might expand the hours uh, right. for the night time right. too. Okay. Do they have to come back for those hours? Because that's not what was written I, up. I think we should try to be clear yeah, on what we understand the hours to be. Yeah. Right. Okay, yes, he has it. So a narrow. It's yeah. in his yeah. package. He has the hours. Eight eight three. Three. Oh, no. It's different now he's saying than those, though, because those ended no, at 2.30 or 3. I, I didn't see packages. the hours that late. I, I, yeah, I, thought thought you know, I saw it. I saw the hours in there. Uh, we said that we're planning to open later. Fourth, fourth later paragraph, paragraph now, first page. 8 to 3, Monday to Friday, 9 to 2. Right. No, no they, they farther than that. That's the same as Max Bebo hours. Yeah. So tonight you're applying for the same hours that we approved for Max Bebo's. Is that correct? Today's application is only for the same hours Max Bebos has. Is that correct? Uh, in, in the nearings, we wrote that we would like to extend our hours yeah, for further good. hours. We just didn't dirt. Oh, here it is. It says planning on opening daily at 7, open on Sundays, and extend the hours in the near future for dinner service. So I read it, yeah. But I think we should still try to. 
put a number on yeah. those things here so that we understand what they are. Thank yes. So, so to go, so right, you you may open as early as seven a.m. You're saying correct, and then Monday through Saturday, what would be the latest that you would be looking to go? At Ten p.m. Ten p.m. on any of those days of the week. Yes, and Sundays would be more. Uh, what it time? would be kind of brunch, so it would be from. We haven't really discussed. It might be from seven all the way to six p.m. or five p.m. Should we approve that now? Raise that question. Well, I now? think it's, it's really part of the liquor license huh. request, okay, special yeah. permit. I think we need, right? we need to know. I think we need to know, right? I'm willing to. I'm willing to uh, make a motion to approve the front. And, and is everybody okay with the hours that the applicant is I'm requesting? I'm not sure what the hours are. Could you repeat what? Give us the bottom line. Definitely. Where, where do you want to go with the hours? That's that's what I'd like to know. Yes. So with us. You know, Denise mentioned it's a corner spot, it's a great location in Weathersville. Uh, we want to extend the hours from 8 to 3, that's right now, to 7, all the way to 10 p.m., Monday to Saturday. And then Sundays, it can be a brunch, and it will be from 7 or 8, depends, to all the way 5 to 6 p.m. Okay. All right, thank you. I think the same hours, uh, Denise, that uh, all Weathersfield has gotten, 11 o'clock. Isn't that what he's asking? He said for? 10 o'clock. 10, 10, sorry. Uh, okay, does that make sense? Uh, the last approval for Old Town was 10 p.m. Okay, good, fine. Is it's this, keeping. Know, it's not really this is much more of a high traffic commercial area. Oh, of course. Well, right? yeah. so, yeah. well where do you want to make it? Yeah. Tom? Yeah, I, I see no, no, you know. No purpose to uh, have an alternative to what the applicant has proposed as described in the uh, uh, memorandum from uh, uh, Denise stated uh, April 28, uh, 2023. And um, the proposed hours of operation are as follows, quote, noon to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday noon to 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Did you do that today? That's, oh, no, that's, the, that's one. the next application. Oh, that's the next application? Oh, that's why I was getting confused. Yeah, yeah oh. so Tom, this, so okay. he's, right. a, he's asking they Monday through Saturday. They were both through, special, they're, yeah, yeah, they're it's both confusing. dealing with the same issues. So. But he's asking Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., Sunday, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., so call it 7 until 6 p.m. Yeah, right. Okay, I see. It, the uh, memorandum from the applicant itself. All right. Yeah. And, and in terms of number of employees, that'll be comparable to what Max Bebo's had previously? Yeah, as we go, is the business grow? We obviously will hire more employees for right now. We kept all the stuff and we have uh, six employees plus ourselves. So to, to be specific, the, so the front outdoor dining that we're talking about, I think we should just identify the number of tables and the number of seats associated with that. It's Wait. Yep. Joe, I, I just want to make sure that the applicant's clear with the four tables in the front uh you still may need to put some crash protection on there right i just want to make sure you understand yeah. that i think it's best that if you, you do that you, you work with our engineers or our fire marshals make sure they're safe i mean just just for the purposes of public safety are you okay with that definitely all right so, so in the front, you're asking for a total of four tables with two chairs each for a total of eight seats? Correct. Okay, subject to the reviews that mm -hmm. you talked about, Peter. Um, Denise, you, you indicate in your memo about parking requirement for outdoor dining. So for eight seats, what would that mean? It would be two parking spaces. Total? Yeah. It's one, one per yeah. four. So do we know whether there's surplus in whatever the count is for that overall shopping center? Uh, so the plaza with uh, Max Bebo's um, has a shared parking agreement with the Rite Aid. Um, so yes, there is, uh, well, yeah. there is adequate parking. For those okay. two, yes. okay. You mean that's still valid, technically? 
It, uh, the shared parking agreement was approved as part of the subdivision of that, that lot. Ah, okay. okay. It's a land type thing. Okay, so, thank you. So we still have to open it up to the, to the public, um, but Tony? You'll be renovating the interior or you'll be keeping the interior as it is? The interior of the in, inside in, of the building. Inside? Yeah. No, we're planning to keep everything the same. Uh, we might have to add a few equipments, uh, kitchen equipments and stuff like that that we were talking to the fire marshal uh, before we came to this application. So refrigerators? Uh, uh, no refrigerator, just a fry later, like cooking equipment cooking and equipment. a grillo for breakfast and uh, lunch and dinner. Operations. Out, out of curiosity, are you changing the menu from what it was before? You know, in, in any major uh, way? Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, it's been a great business for 21 years. We're planning to keep uh, what people come for. We just want to add to it a uh, little more options. Okay. How about the outside lighting? Will you be changing that because you'll be open till 10 o'clock? Probably uh, people will be there till 11 or 12. Will you be adding any more lighting to the outside? Uh, we have not. You don't plan to as of now? Correct, as is right now. Do they need it, Tony, you think? Well, we've talked about indirect lighting, things that don't glare over to the roads. That would be a little more oversight by the engineering department. Is that yeah. something I think you, it may be a good idea to have something. That I think so, are. too. Yeah, is that something, Denise, the engineer and fire marshal would can consider and, and, and you? Okay. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the public who would like to speak on this application? Anyone in the public who would like to speak on this? Last, Yes, if you would come up to the podium and identify yourself. Hi, I'm Casey White, 91 Center Street. And um, I'm just now learning about this. And I just want to say it sounds really great. I think Silas Dean has a lot of potential for more foot traffic and more people existing outside of the buildings and it not just being a car expressway. So um, I think it's wonderful and I applaud you. That's a big investment and I hope that more follows. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience like to speak on this application? Anyone else on this application? Last call, anybody who'd like to speak on this application? Okay, back to the commission. Are there any more questions for the applicant by anyone? Does, George? Um, I'm glad to see this taking place. This is a business that needs some modernization a little bit. And it's been there a long time. I'm glad to see this happening. And uh, it's kind of in my neighborhood, sort of in New Weathersfield, as I, they call it. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, no, and I'm glad they're doing that. and. Uh, I want to wish them the best of luck. I've told the economic development director in town that I want to see her providing more restaurants on the Silas Dean Highway, and they're improving this one, and that's good. I'm glad to see it. Does the applicant have anything further you'd like to say before we close the hearing? I just want to say thank you for your time, and we want to take this to the next level and make the Wethersville, uh, you know, People like proud to bring some local business and make the uh, area more traffic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. By Peter. Second. Second. By George. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Our right. hearing is closed. Would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion to approve. Application 2143-23Z, Max Vivo, Mediterranean, in accordance with 5.8, the alcoholic beverages, and 5.2F2 uses uh, in regard to the sale of alcohol with outdoor dining at 691 Salestine Highway to include four ta no, more than four tables, two chairs each, subject to um, review and complete. East, east side. You want to the, the east side? Yeah. Okay, east side subject to the review by the town engineer and fire marshal and any other uh, related offices inclusive of the town planner. And, and just to clarify, east side is the front of the, the front building of the facing right. Silas yeah. Dean? Yes. Okay. I'll second. And, and it, should we also 
address the hours of operation of oh, the really? establishment which the applicant that would be monday through saturday from 7 a.m to 10 p.m and sunday from 7 a.m to 6 p.m okay is there a second 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 oh, yeah. okay yeah. peter seconded and then now let's any discussion george yeah um do we want to discuss any Posts or barriers out front. I'm not sure if we they're needed. I think the engineering guy was supposed to do that. Both the both the fire marshal and the town engineer recommended crash protection, so they will advise on what they okay. um, good. Suggest. But I'm I'm not sure it's needed actually, but it may be because it's the parallel parking near it that mm -hmm. kind of precludes maybe mm -hmm. the need for it. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, okay. And, thank and, you. And, and I guess just to be clear, the the motion as it stands. The outdoor dining is limited to the four tables, two seats each in front. And in terms of the other seating requested by the applicant, they they are welcome to come back to us at a future time that's correct. with more detailed right. plans exactly. to evaluate. Okay, but that's not part of tonight's approval, or part of tonight's motion. Sorry, Ta right. Tom. And in terms of the dealing with the issue of of safety for that uh, particular uh, area where the tables would be placed. We are essentially delegating the, re the responsibility to the office of the town planner, the town engineer, and the town fire marshal to approve whatever the applicant proposes in terms of crash barriers or any other uh, structures to secure the safety of uh, those outside customers. I, mean, I, th I think okay. we're really asking them to review the types of of safety and related issues that are within their purview, right? So it's it's broader. You you, you perceive it to be uh, a broader delegation of responsibility and authority beyond just uh, crash barriers and, and the like. It's it's overall safety. I, I think we're saying anything that's you know that that's relevant to those departments and I think it's mostly safety related items that we're talking about safety I think there may also be items that are required you know by the uh, I mean that's what they do that's their job right right, yeah, I, right. I, we don't want to sign up for that right <laughs> right 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 okay so it, we're essentially we're delegating that responsibility out to the various uh, uh, town departments that would be, you know, the reviewing pay. the, the right. people plans pay. of the yeah. applicant. That's right. Okay. Any anything further? That's good. Okay. If if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So I think six of us. I don't, Rich. I didn't see how long you were here, but um, uh, thirty seconds. Okay, so six of us uh, <laughs> so, voting on. This. I, I don't think there was a second made on the motion. Oh, okay. I, I second. Was. Peter, Peter was. Was. Okay. George seconded it. I'll make so a second. Tony made the motion, and Peter seconded it. Oh, okay. 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 So good on yep, that. Good. All right. What's your pleasure, Rich? Do you work? You can keep going if you want. You're, you're faster than you. You want me to keep? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to if you'd like. It. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's go to Sorry, let's go to uh, <laughs> 2144 uh, Hungry Pot Weathersfield seeking a special permit in accordance with Section 5.8 Alcoholic Beverages for sale of alcohol at 1045 Silestine Highway. The applicant would come up and identify yourself and uh, explain what it is that you're seeking. Good evening. Uh, my name is Fred Hellish. I'm an attorney out of Norwalk, Connecticut, and I represent the applicant in getting a liquor license uh, and this uh, application for a special permit is part of the process. Um, my clients have rented a commercial space located at 1045 Silas Dean Highway, which is in the so-called Weathersfield Shopping Center. Uh, this space was formerly occupied by Friendly's Ice Cream Store, which I guess is out of business. And it's about 4,500 square feet in size, so it's a pretty large space. So this shopping center is uh, located along Silas Dean Highway, and uh, the area zoning-wise is classified as a regional commercial zone. 
which is intended, according to the language, uh, to provide the residents of Wethersfield and the surrounding areas with uh, large-scale business developments. And as you know, large-scale business developments have sprung up um, along Silas Dean Highway. So my clients plan to operate a restaurant establishment in there that uh, features a novel menu concept um, that combines a Korean barbecue menu, which is like grilled meats primarily, with a Chinese hot pot menu. So it's kind of exotic, I guess you could say. And the latter concept, that hot pot thing, is where the clients, the customers, <coughs> uh, cook foods in different kinds of broths at their tables. So it's sort of like a do-it-yourself kind of operation. If you remember the fondues of yesteryear, cheese and chocolate fondues, there used to be restaurants for that. So the concept is a little similar. You, you kind of cook your own stuff. Uh, apparently, these have been successful in other states, and so we'll see more of those in Connecticut, I'm sure, including my clients have uh, one in Danbury and then one in the Buckland Mall in Manchester, where they have leased spaces for the same concept as well. Um, now, according to the uh, um, zoning regulations, the uh, liquor license in Weathersfield needs a special permit application according to section 5.8. Uh, so first of all, the large sit-down um, restaurant my clients are contemplating, I think is in line with the development plans for this area. And according to the zoning regulations, one thing that the uh, board is supposed to consider is the proximity of religious and educational facilities uh, in proximity to the establishment that wants a liquor license. According to my research, which is basically just looking at Google Earth or whatever it's called with those layers, there is a New Life Christian Fellowship congregation that pops up on the Google thing. I don't know if they're still there. Apparently, supposedly, they probably are. And they are some thousand feet south of uh, where my clients are located. The uh, congregation, the church is separated by Mill Street and some uh, residential areas with trees from the shopping area, which would be the southern edge of the shopping area if you look at the map. There's also a child uh, daycare center that's about 300 feet south of the church. There's like uh, Kindergarten of America, so I guess is one of them. And then to the west of it, to the left of it on the, on the map, there would be a uh, privately run daycare center. Okay, so these are the uh, um, distances from uh, facilities that could pose a problem for a liquor li license establishment. Uh, I, I looked and um, Chipotle restaurant, which is at 1048, 1084 of Silas Dean Highway, across the street, kind of diagonally from where, where my client want to have their establishment. They seem to have a, a restaurant liquor license already, at least I see on their menu, tequila items and beer and wine, I guess, <laughs> to go with your Mexican meal. So, well, that's basically the concept that my clients have. Um, I guess some other details are on the application, like the opening hours, et cetera, et cetera. But, so they're trying to fill this rather large space, which otherwise, well, maybe something else would come in there. <laughs> but um, yep. they hope you will look favorably on the application. Are, are they planning to re redo the seating arrangement from what it had been under Friendly's, which was mostly booths, I believe? Uh, I'm pretty sure that the concept will be different. I don't know if they have a unified standard concept for uh, that is uniform across their different developments. I would Im imagine that there is some kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, effort to be uniform with the other restaurants. I don't know if, if that's, uh, it's, it's probably not like McDonald's where everything is super standardized, but I cannot really tell you the details regarding the uh, interior, but I'm sure it will be different from so, friendlies. So for example, do you know how many seats, what the seat count would be uh, as proposed? Um, Maybe uh, Mr. Zhang, who accompanied me here, 
me yeah. know more so about this? Um, as part of the record, um, hmm. they did submit a uh, conceptual floor plan. Um, so it does show um, a whole new interior fit up. It does not have uh, the seating capacity on the plan, but it does show essentially cooktops being installed in the center of each of the tables shown. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those are the actual individual grill units that you would sit at the table and, yeah, and, and right. cook. Maybe the number of tables on the, on the map, on the, on the floor plan, can give us a clue as to the seating capacity. Uh, if I don't know if they, uh, the plan indicates I, I individual benches or, or chairs or anything like that, but perhaps an estimate can be made based on that. It looks like about 120. Joe, can I ask a question? Sure. They mentioned a bar area. They're going to have a bar there? I believe there's going to be a separate bar. A separate bar. I'm yeah. just not jumping on me here, but maybe mm -hmm. it's so small. Yes. So there's going to be a bar then. I think this the, Rich, when you counted, are those all four person tables all across the top, I guess? Yeah, I counted the big ones as fours, and then there are little ones to the right that uh -huh. look like twos. And then way down on the bottom, those dark. Ten spots or those bar stools or something. These, yeah. no, I think those are cook stoves. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think these are the bar stools right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any any commission members with questions? Joe, just a question for you. The, the, the question on occupancy is for the purpose of parking or just well, uh, what the maximum would be in a building like this. Yeah, part, part of the question was, I guess, f from Denise, I don't know, is do, do you evaluate the parking requirement when there's a change from one restaurant to another, or do you just... The, the fire marshal does. Um, they, they set the occupancy, but if they were not looking for a liquor permit, this would not be before you at all. I mean, I would be notified by the building department that they were doing a fit-up. Right, it wouldn't even um, be a site plan application. Okay. Two quick questions sure. of Denise. Is there a reason why we uh, uh, publicize the lease arrangements? Is that something we request, or is it just part of the application based on the way the applicant just wants to file? That, that was just what they submitted. We just require um, a signature of the owner or that something lease, for the record. For that statement that, that says, they do on Yeah. And with the approval, because it's a different change of a restaurant, is it good to, should we be including the hours of operation with the liquor permit, uh, subject to the liquor permit, or does that matter? I think subject to the liquor permit, yeah. It, and, and they did submit the proposed well, hours. Yeah, to 10 and Sunday, so just suggesting to add that to it. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other commission questions at this point? Um, anyone in the public who'd like to speak on this application? Anyone in the public who'd like to speak? Last call, anybody in the public who'd like to speak on this? All right. Um, any further questions by the commission? Does the applicant have anything further? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. Right. Would someone like to make a motion to close the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Second. So, uh, motion by Rich, second by George. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Would someone like to make a motion on the application? I make a motion to approve this application. I'll second. All right, and are you? With the hours? Yeah, the hours. That's submitted. That's submitted. That's submitted. That's submitted. Yeah, fine. All right, is there any uh, discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. All right, the uh, last public hearing, 2146, Patrick Chaduski seeking special permit for outside storage of a boat at 81 Center Street. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Council. Uh, my name is Patrick Chodolski. Um, 
me and my family reside at uh, 81 Center Street in Wethersfield. I've uh, been resident for most of my life here. Uh, the petition here is to board seeking a variance of section 3.5.1B uh, for outside storage of the boat, not permitted by the zoning regulations. Uh, what we're looking for is for ability to uh, store our uh, small boat. It's a 16 foot boat um, on a driveway along the house. Uh, it is not in front of the house. It's along the edge of the house. It's shielded from one side by uh, our house, which is uh, west of the boat, and then from east by um, residents at 75 Center Street. Um, I mean, to, to see that boat from the street, it's, uh, you literally have to look for it. Um, there's enough distance from the street that there's a uh, two cars parked without interference with the sidewalk. Um, Further, Wethersfield is a uh, establishment built on the river. As you look at the seal over there, you actually can see a boat on the side of the structure on a seal. Um, so this is this is what we're looking for um, from this council is for permission to keep the boat in our driveway. Okay, and I think there there are a couple of uh, emails in in the record here. Uh, one is from Daisy Weaver lives across the street. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, she is essentially in opposition and asks whether uh, it's possible to uh, use the backyard for it. And then uh, and then there's a bunch more that I think we all received by email this afternoon. Um, there's seven of them. All they're of them all in, are favor, in favor, right? Those are by Beth Grice, 58 Center Street, Sharon Richwine, 50 Center Street, Linda Walsh. 49 Woodland, Casey White, 91 Center Street, uh, Kate Colazzo, 29 Center Street, Deborah Cohn, 73 Church Street, and Scott Kremen, 67 Center Street. If I can approach. Sure. George. Uh, we'll uh, wait till he does gets the boat. Back to the microphone. He wants to. I know. He wants to give us something. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you give us. I want to ask him a question. Yeah, but he'll just pass out some pictures. Oh. So those are, those are pictures from Google. Oh, from oh fine. Sure. The white structure is a boat, and okay. it is on the side of the house. Thank you. Who passed it? Thank you very much. Okay. So the question I wanted to ask. I think it's answered by the picture. Uh, the boat doesn't stick out beyond the front of the house, right? One foot. I can push One it a little foot. bit further. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any, any other questions uh, from the commission at this point? Um, uh, Jean Dobby, Jak się masz? Dobrze. Dobrze, dziękuję. Do you um, keep the boat there all year long? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's our. You, the reason why you're here is because you don't have enough room on the side to get uh, it, access to the backyard. Is that correct? It, it, so it is on the side of the house. The limited. reason the reason why I can't get it to the totally to the back of the yard yeah. is the width of the property. There is literally nine and a half feet between our house and the fence that uh, to the neighbors. The the boat on a um, trailer is eight and a half feet. Okay. So it's just when, when limited you, access. To the if you move yeah, on. and this is the only point of access to the back of the property. Yeah. Uh, Tom. A uh, question for Denise. Could you uh, provide some uh, description of the history of this, this application, how it came to be, and uh, also, uh, in particular, why in our package we have uh, some documentation from the uh, uh, from the Board of Zoning Appeals regarding this particular property uh, that appears to be uh, part of uh, deliberations for uh, a variance. So, and I don't quite understand why that's in the record. Um, I think that was just a 
error in terms of the board that was being addressed. It was meant to be the Planning and Zoning Commission for you guys this evening. I see. Any, any other? Dave. Yeah, how long have you had the boat? Uh, three years. Three years. And again, that kind of question you, but did you know you weren't going to be able to fit it when you bought it? No. I, I, I didn't know that. I'm not. I'm not say you, again, not to insult you, lived in town the whole life. You always know there's problems with boats, but yeah. I, I wasn't really okay. aware of that of the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is what it is. Okay. And then just to finalize, the um, this was the result of a complaint through the zoning enforcement officer, so that it was referred to um, the commission for review. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other commission members have questions? George, um, I've seen the site. It's a difficult site. It would be difficult getting that boat down beyond their entryway. Entryway sticks out into that driveway. There's a big bush from the neighbor. Yep. I don't know why you allow that in your yard, but anyway, it's there. And uh, it's the overall thing is difficult. To, it would be difficult to get that boat back and forth. That's correct. And uh, and it's not out beyond the front of the building. Uh, anyway. I don't. I don't see any problems. I. I don't even know if it'd be di difficult to utilize the back or not, other than getting by your entryway, right? Correct. The, the stone steps there. That, that's another obstacle on on, yeah. on the way to the no, back. Not a, yeah, not because possible. they extend two feet beyond the plus dwelling. the bush that sticks plus out. The, yeah, plus the fence. So you'd have to insist your neighbor cut that down, and then you'd get into a fight with him and. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, you know. Anyway, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Any Thank other you. questions? Um, so just, Peter? You mentioned that uh, you'd be okay with pushing it back a little more? Correct. So um, uh, how far back could you push it? I mean, the further back you push it, I, I guess, the less obtrusive it's going to be from the street. So I'm just curious uh, what, what you're comfortable with. I mean, probably one more foot because you need to still have an entrance to the side of the house. All right, so that, that, that's basically it then, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what'd you say? Basically, you can't move it much, really. More, more than a foot. Foot? Says. Yeah, something like that. Now, that's not worth uh, even discussing. It's not gonna help. Can't even measure it. <laughs> okay, is there anybody in the uh, audience who would like to speak on this application? Yes? My name is Beth Grice. I live at 58 Center Street. And I just want to say it's, I can see their house, 81 Center Street, from my front porch. And there's absolutely nothing eyesore-ish about the boat there. No more than a car in the driveway. I mean, it's not like they have a dishwasher in their front yard. Okay. Thank you. Dishwasher. Anyone else would like, yes, if you could come up. <laughs> just take the door off. <laughs> Right. Leave the door <laughs> Hi, again, Casey White, 91 Center Street. So I'm two houses down, and like, I don't even, I wouldn't even know how long they've had the boat because it just blends in. It's, I would never call that an eyesore. It's, it literally blends in. It's covered. It is the essentially equivalent of a car, which everyone has in their driveways. So I see no problem with it at all. Thank you, George. Let me ask you a question. Me? Yeah, I'll ask you a question. Okay. If you're a member of Old Weathersfield. Uh, isn't it known that Old Weathersfield people live there because they're close to the water and they may have boats? Yeah, I mean, people had boats in Weathersfield before cars ever existed. It's yeah. a historic boating town. Exactly. More than where I live in New Weathersfield. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like you said, it's on the seal okay. there. I mean, there's houses with ship captains' name on names on them, and it seems a big part of the town heritage and pride. I mean, I wish I had a boat to enjoy. <laughs> well, I have kayaks, <laughs> okay. little ones. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. <laughs> and anyone else who'd like to speak on this application? Anyone else? Last call. Anyone else on this application? All right. Is there any more questions from commission members? 
Yeah. Does no, that... I was just wondering whether George was going to be so nautical friendly with every boat application <laughs> that we get from today on out. <laughs> Motion to close the hearing. Uh, no, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll still address you with that, even though you're sitting in the wrong place tonight. <laughs> I'll before, second the motion. Before we close, I just want to ask the applicant, do you have anything further you'd like to say? No, th thank you for consideration. Okay. I appreciate your time. Th thank you. Okay. Mo who made the motion to close? Rich and second, second by Tony. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Would someone like to make a motion on the application? I'll make the motion to approve 2146-23Z for Patrick uh, in accordance with 3-5-1B4 the zoning regulations for alternate storage of a boat, 81 Center Street, to be in the driveway is set back from the front of the house. Is there a second? Second. Second by George. Any discussion? Uh, Rich and then Dave. Is this a, an approval for a 16-foot vote? Correct. 16-foot, yep. We can add that to the motion. Yeah, because, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the, the neighbors might feel differently if it was a 34-foot mm -hmm. boat. No, I'd like, to, I'd like to change that. In fact, I'd like to have it just for this boat. This boat, okay. No other boats. No, so no, if, you no. Have, if you sold it, change it, you have to come back. Understood. Just this boat here. That's it. Understood. So for okay, you you. both good suggestions, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you, can you put that in the motion, or how do you do that? We That's accepted second. that that language. Denise will add it to it. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, it's for, it's for the you. boat depicted in the uh, photos that were. Submitted basically, and that's there now, sure. right? 16 foot long, 2003 smoker craft. Okay. And this is, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, this is not a seasonal approval that we're making. It's permanent, year round, right? Right. Forever. Okay. Yeah, I mean that. That's why I felt at least putting this out there because it is permanent. It is what. That's why I wanted to make it, at least have us recognize that it was for this boat as opposed to any other boat of oh, any yeah. size. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Rich, would you like the uh, the, the name of the oh, boat as part of the oh, yeah. motion? Okay. That, and that was acceptable as well to the it motion is. maker and the seconder. George, you seconded it. Yeah, right? second, okay. yes. All right. All right. Anything further? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Application is approved. Thank you so much. All right. Um, other, other business? Do you have any other business, Denise? Okay. Minutes of April 18th. Let's see, that one. Let's see if we've got... Uh, Oh yeah, Mr. Chairman, can I ask one of our fellow commissioners why why a question? Why he didn't get up and, and, and testify in this last application? You live on the street. Me? Yeah, you. I'm a couple blocks away. <laughs> and I like you I'm still close. I, I, I drove by the applicant, so I did I did uh, <laughs> you observe drive by it a lot, I'm sure. Okay, right, thank the, you. For I the minutes, we've got plenty of people. Have zing them, that's all. For the minutes, is there somebody who'd like to make a motion? Yeah, a motion to approve the uh, April 18th minutes. Rich, is there a second? Second. By George. Oh. Any, um, so, any Thomas question? Tom, yes, I, 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 there's a, a portion of the minutes that I think it, uh, is not totally accurate and um, uh, needs some additional verbiage to make sense out of the uh, the language uh, contained in the minutes that is on page three uh, one two three fourth full paragraph down and I recognize it because it's, it w relates to comments that I had made and uh, the particular portion that is stated in the draft minutes it says uh, quote, Commissioner Dean stated his analysis from a regulatory standpoint stated he did not hear the town respond to the potential regulatory conflict of regulations and policies that seem to be inherent in that analysis. And uh, what needs to be done is, is what I was stating at that time was uh, the, my agreement with the analysis of um, 
let's see, of uh, the of Commissioner Hamner. Uh, so I I would recommend that we modify the language of the proposed minutes to read uh, as follows. Commissioner Dean stated his analysis conforms to that indicated by Commissioner Hamner from a regulatory standpoint, and that would then make sense to the, uh, the remainder of uh, the comments stated in that uh, particular paragraph. So, so you, you're leaving the rest of the So I'm indicating paragraph. that I'm, my, the analysis that this refers to is the analysis that Commissioner Hamner had made in, the, in his uh, foregoing okay. uh, comments. Have that yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yep. you know, nice. what's not indicated here is what analysis is this talking about. Okay. So, yeah. so Rich Got made that, the motion, said it's fine. Is that fine yes. with you, George? Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. Any, yeah. Anything further on the minutes? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Minutes are approved. St <coughs> excuse me. Staff reports. Really have anything specific to report? I do. Um, I did include some attachments, but um, we can speak about them after uh, the public comment. Okay. Anyone here who would like to speak uh, from the public? Yes, sir. Please come up and uh, identify yourself. Hi, I'm Frank Tobacco from CCC Construction. Uh, we're doing a development over on uh, Vinnie Lane's Stella Drive and Luca Lane in the back on the corner of the Newington Wethersfield Town Line. And I've got, uh, I'm trying to beat the weather. As uh, Thomas recalls, we went in front of the wetlands agency to try to get some approvals ready uh, for what is eventually going to happen and take place for work. Um, and we've stumbled a little bit in reference to bonding issues um, that need to be addressed uh, with Derek. Um, who has not had the opportunity to review them all yet. Um, so at the moment we did our last review with you, uh, we did in the estimates, uh, Derek reviewed them. He came up with a requirement of $138,800 worth of a cash bond. Uh, we've put up the cash bond and we've been slowly working our way through the project and getting things done. The sewer is in, tested passed, the water is in. Being tested, failed the first time, bacteria counts in the water. so reflushing, redoing, and we've been constructing the storm drainage. Um, and we're getting ready to do our final compaction test for the sub base, get ready for process, I mean, get ready for the gas, which I got to do the crossings in the road and work my way to the completion, which is the gravel, the binder, the process that I forgot and um, the electrical conduit on the side of the road. Um, so with that, we've been using those cash bonds and just slowly letting them sit there and and progressing to get the work done. Um, so we're trying to get ready for, believe it or not, the planting season for the fall. Um, so I've got two homes that have already been sold. There are lots 11 and 12. They've got to go in front of Thomas's committee for the wetlands to get approvals. Um, but as part of that, to get in front of wetlands, I'm being told that I have to have your approval on the new bond rate. Um, the running new bond what the new bond value you have value, to set a right. new bond um, so we ran the numbers and we sent them to Derek using the charts that he had from the very beginning um, and we've bonded the first part like we said and we've run the math and done the, the numbers without with them for his program and sent them back but he hasn't had the opportunity to review them yet um, and the amount of work that is left, if, unless we've missed something, is just about $91,000. I'm not asking for a bond reduction. I'm just asking to put the cart out in front of the horse so I can be ready for when that happens. Because if I don't get approval or have Denise have the ability to work with Derek in modifying the scope of work, not the dollar values, but just the scope of work, I guess, is what's needed, I can't proceed through wetlands, I think. Is that correct, Thomas? That's my understanding. So I'm looking to establish a way that I don't miss the next wetlands meeting, use the funds that I currently have in town, not ask for a reduction in anything, and just continue moving forward so that I can get in front of wetlands 
to have them review and approve the two homes to get started. Because by the time that happens, it's already May, they'll do their approvals sometime this month, I don't know when, and by the time we get mobilized from there, it's June. And it leaves me July and August. And the planting season starts August 28th, and it ends at the end of September because frost comes in. I have two homes to build, and three months is very tight. And I want to get the lawns in the back stable before winter conditions because we dealt with two previously this winter, and it was hellish. And I don't want to do that again. So how is that possible? How can we come up with a solution that we can work with Denise and not have to come back in front of you? I don't need a reduction in the bond until I do the final pavement and leave just the wear course cash bond, if that's sufficient. Just to under, so basically there's more work that has to be bonded for the two additional lots that are in front of wetlands and what so, you're so saying is you want to. Phase two right. is, is, I think it's got the paper bond, Denise, I think, and then phase three we're using the cash bond. Um, so phase two is being constructed, phase three is being constructed. They're all in the same phase. All the water's in, all the sewer's in, all the subgrade is there. The waiting on the gas company to come in and do the gas main and then do the conduit crossings forever source, put the gravel, the binder, and pave. Road complete, minus the seating of the shoulders, and then bringing in the power forever source, which is just conduit on the sides. So what does he need from us, Denise? So typically, um, I receive a recommendation from the town engineer after he's received a bond estimate, and then once the recommendation is made, I, I put it on the agenda. So um, Derek received the estimate but did not give a recommendation, so that's why it is not on your agenda. So the next um, wetlands meeting is the 17th. Uh, we do have a planning and zoning meeting the night before. Um, but Will that be good enough for him? I don't know what the submission deadline for his um, for that hearing is, or what he needs. If he needs I, I don't know. for PNZ in place before he will accept the application, I'm not sure. My understanding that that the action on the part of this commission is is required in order for the uh, Inland Wetlands Commission to act. So, in terms of timing. Uh, he uh, definitively needs to have this commission to approve the new, the new bonding limits or the rollover of the current bonding to cover his new scope um, you know, on the meeting of the, what is it, the 16th? Well, we have a meeting on the 16th. 16th the and, there, and the, uh, the, the hearing in front of the Inland Wetlands Commission has been continued until uh, May 17th. So if this commission can act on its meeting on the 16th, then the Wetlands Commission can uh, uh, complete its deliberations and act uh, on its meeting uh, the following night. So what so action? That's, that's what. What action do we have to take tonight? We need. For, I mean, Frank is here in, during public comment. So right. So there's action. no application. Yeah, we we for can't us to take any action none. tonight other than saying we we understand what it is that he's saying, and you know when something is presented to us on the 16th, we will act on it right. and you oh, know okay. be From as his cooperative as possible to, to allow it to, to have move have forward. The town engineer uh, submit the documentation regarding this issue. Uh, to Denise in order for her to put it on the agenda for our next meeting. That, but there's nothing that we can do right now on this. So I think, you know, he's just, he's just informing us of what his needs are and uh, alerting us to what he hopes will be on the, the next agenda for the commission. Okay. Denise, can you so we don't have try to, to get what we need from the town engineer so we time. don't do any action tonight not tonight no, no. The, I, the, the engineer is in receipt of the estimate um, and he will review and provide the recommendation I would imagine and is it, probably is, by the end of this week is one day enough between the committees to 
to let me go yeah. and, and proceed, or is there? We don't have the information. To be is able there to say something that I'm not? I, I, so that, that's why I asked the question. The difference would be if you can concurrently apply. You already have the application pending before Wetlands. I do. So, yeah, the application is yeah, already you, there before no, Wetlands. I just don't know when your committee meets. We meet the 16. night before their okay. next meeting. So that night before, if they say yes. I can proceed, but if they come back with different comments and I have to readjust the bond, I don't know, just devil's advocate and go in the higher amount, is that going to affect me? I don't see it, but I'm just playing devil's advocate. As I see it, the only way it would affect you is, is in terms of the amount that would be you know, presented uh, before this commission and thence to the Inland Wetlands Commission. It doesn't really affect the status of you know the the sequence of actions that need to be taken it will only affect potentially the amount of of uh, the the bonding that uh, would be required and if i'm not asking for a reduction in bond then i leave more than what's in town hall is that okay too or do i need to come and ask for that reduction i don't think i want to we need to set the amount i mean it could be 80 90 100 110 you know it could be the less than what you have there now but we we need to set the amount okay. um and that's you know and, need and whether you keep it on account with the town is you know between you and them but we need to actually establish the amount so that you have the official approval to go forward with that being kind of the baseline amount and that's why we need the uh uh the town engineering department to respond and provide the documentation to this commission in order to have uh, the issue put before the commission at, the, at its next meeting and in theory that will ha that could and should happen the, the this commission then would act uh, on the 17th and the following day or following evening the inland wetlands commission would would act uh, in, in response to the actual substance of your your application before the wetlands commission okay denise is there anything i need to fill out because i just got noticed today that we couldn't be heard so i want to make sure that all um, i need is the recommendation from the so the department. hold up is on derek all right we're waiting on him to do the review once we get yes once okay. we get his review and recommendation yep. okay thank you thank you any yes So for the record, Tom Dean is a member of the Inland Wetlands, is that correct? That's correct, no. <clears throat> Thanks. Okay. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I just want to share with you uh, uh, my experience in another town at a planning and zoning uh, commission hearing. And uh, I've been attending these meetings here in Weathersfield for almost 10 years now. I missed a few. But um, uh, this, was a, this was a large project, a controversial project. And uh, in another town, they appeared to go out of their way to prohibit the public from speaking. Um, they received written comments, but evidently there's no requirement that commissioners read the written comments. And I just want to commend everybody here tonight and those members that uh, are not here tonight, that you guys do a fantastic job with that. Tonight, Joe uh, asked the, uh, asked the uh, audience three times, is there anything else you'd like to say? And uh, I think that that goes a long way of how the meetings run. Um, in this particular case, it was a Zoom meeting. Um, you had to register in advance to speak you could watch the zoom meeting and evidently you appeared on the commissioner's screen as an applicant but people in the audience couldn't tell how many people were were there turns out there was over 50 people on the zoom meeting watching you told me tom you had to register yes <coughs> yes you just don't show up publicly it was not a public meeting away. george it was oh. a zoom meeting okay and uh, so anyways, I just wanted to say, you know, that's not how things are done here in Weathersfield, and I, I applaud how it works. 
Um, it was, like I say, it was a very controversial uh, topic. It was uh, one of these mega warehouses, 530,000 square feet, wow. abutting a residential area. And uh, they just uh, really, they, they shut you down with two minutes to speak. Um, they do it a little bit different format. They have a question period, so a person can get up and basically recite their two or three questions, and then they're done, and commissioners can in, re reply, or the applicant can reply. And then there's another section for public comment. Like I say, restricted to two minutes. Uh, it wasn't a very polite, you know, could you please wrap it up? It was your time is up next and on and uh, like I say I just wanted to share with you guys that you know, everybody up here uh, Denise and everyone really I think goes out of their way to to listen to the public and, and you know may not go the way the public wants but at least you're you know taking those comments to heart and I hope everybody's reading written comments I know you generally uh, summarize or paraphrase the, the comments uh, those were not written. Matter of fact, uh, one of the commissioners even stated on the Zoom meeting that he hadn't read the comments. I thought that was kind of borderline uh, appeal stuff, but I've been told by their planning and zoning and their town attorney that no, they satisfied all the requirements and as long as those comments were in the record, too bad. So anyways, thanks again for everything that you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two minutes, huh? Sounds like <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Denise, was there some correspondence you wanted to mention? Yeah, there were just a few things that I uh, included in the record. One was a copy of a um, notice of expired plan of conservation and development that was sent um, with a application by the town clerk's office, um, which is an example of when I spoke with um, you at the last meeting of why I thought it would be beneficial to do a concurrent process of updating the existing document so it's a valid document and and then also going through the process of doing a full update of the plan of development every time we apply for funding um, until it is updated we have to um, submit this request uh, so um, just, just for your information, uh, the second document is. Uh, do you find that you do you think that's going to be at all difficult, Denise? I mean, I, I only had to do it once, and uh, we got a response from um, OPM within a day or two. Um, I don't think it is typically going to be an issue, but there are some occasions where. You know, we are putting in a last-minute application, um, and and you might oh, run into okay. an issue. Thank you. Um, or if for whatever reason they said that, you know, they were not going to support the request, I guess. Um, but uh, the second item is a referral from the town of Newington. It's a application for 751 Russell Road. Uh, solely engineering they just uh, came before us for the approval for the self-storage facility uh, this is for a new gas station approval uh, they there is a uh, site plan included in the record just for um, for your information I also included a summary of some public workshops from the Hartford Brainerd Airport study um, they have reached out to us. They have, there's a consultant uh, they wanted to meet about future uh, land use of the airport, so we will be meeting with them in the next week or two. Oh, wait, wait a minute. They, they want to come in to see us in here? Not the, the commission. The, uh, you proposed uh, Myself and the manager and a oh, few okay. of the other town staff. Yep. Oh, that's good. Glad to hear that. Um, there's a cut sheet on PFAS information that was provided to municipalities that I, I copied for everyone. Um, and, uh, and then we did receive a copy of the economic development report from 
uh, the Economic Development Director, Joya Zach, at the request of um, George, because he likes how she puts the color pictures in the spreadsheet, and mine doesn't have that, so. Uh, excuse me, how often will she be submitting that to you and or us? She provides them monthly to the um, monthly oh. to the EDIC, so I'll I'll forward them to you as well. For oh, very good, thank you. And if there's any specific property that you had any questions on, um, you know I can like answer that for you. Or if there are additional properties that you want us to provide status on, um, we could also include those. That's about all I have. Okay. Anything on the future? Pending applications. I do have the agenda for the next meeting. Um, so we don't have any public hearings scheduled uh, that met the deadline. So what? Uh, so if um, we receive the recommendation from the town engineer, the only other request that I had for the next meeting is a presentation by Desegregate CT. Okay. So I guess this would be a conversation, you know, do you want to do this on Zoom? Yeah, that, that's a thought. I guess the only other thing I'm thinking is that since we talked about amending the POCD kind of on a fast track, is there anything that you could do between now and then to kind of like at least tell us what it is that you're thinking that we should do and, and what the steps would be, you know, like do we need to have a public hearing on it and that sort of thing? It, we would have to have a public hearing. So what I would um, have prepared for you for the next agenda packet is, you know, I would go through the existing POCD and just suggest a few changes yeah. and then set the public hearing date. Yeah, because I mean, if we have to go through all of the same processes as if we were adopting a new one, that includes a referral to the council. So if yep. we want to get it done, we're probably looking like it early fall, you know, as mm -hmm. the best case scenario to, to get it over with. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some things that are probably pretty obvious, like updating the 2010 census figures. Right. Yeah. Talking about manufacturers and businesses that are closed. And mm -hmm. So I will um, provide those suggestions to you. Um, if you'd like, I can forward them ahead. And um, unless there's any other suggestions, I could get that up to Krog. Yeah, I mean, maybe well, we don't have to rush on it. I mean, I. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to have I an intern? Get something out in advance all um, of the meeting. I will. Yeah. Are you going to have an intern this summer? Um, we might. Okay. We we have interest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this might be a good thing for that it, person to work it, on. It, in your office, is she, is she, attached to you or are you engineering and the manager? Is who attached to me? The, the one sitting. She and the planning office. Uh, What's her the name? Depart the department includes the myself, the economic development director, Joya Zach, and our clerk, Lynn Rowe. And who? Our clerk, Lynn Rowe. Lynn Rowe, yeah. But then who's, who's the one sitting in just inside the door? So she uh, sits within our office. Um, she is a direct report to the manager. She's the capital um, projects coordinator. Oh, does she help you with things? Or isn't she allowed to? Uh, she uh, supports the department in many ways, but not um, related to updating the plan of conservation and development. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, if nothing <clears throat> further, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion so made, Mr. Chairman. By George, second by Peter. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.